Hi everyone, I'm Z, and in today's video, we're going to answer the question, can ChatGPT run Monte Carlo simulations? Uh, spoiler alert, the answer is yes, yes it can. And uh, I will be walking through um, how it does it. Uh, so yes, it can run Monte Carlo simulations, but you do kind of need to know what you're doing um, rather than just taking the um, results that it gives uh, at face value. So my name is Z, and if you're new to the channel, I write and I talk about data, digitalization, and AI. And if you're not familiar with Monte Carlo as a concept, uh, it is a simulation technique uh, that you can use for modeling. So typically when you want to estimate something, you know, you normally give a single number and you add up lots of single numbers. Uh, a Monte Carlo simulation is when you can define uh, variability in your inputs uh, and when you run it multiple times, uh, you get kind of a, a range of um, outputs for the total you're interested in. So this is something that has a lot of utility in a wide range of uh, use cases. Um, I've written about how you can use Monte Carlo simulations in the finance um, investing kind of space where you can use it to uh, estimate um, stock prices, you can use it to estimate um, the optimal portfolio uh, mix. Uh, I've also written an article about how we can use it to make budget estimates. Um, and maybe the best way to describe it is uh, to kind of show you what it looks like in action. So this um, particular tutorial uh, was written and demonstrates something called Excel Risk. It is a really nice um, open source tool, uh, which is an Excel add-in that allows you to do uh, probabilistic um, estimates where instead of just fixed numbers, so this is a contrived example where it is a vacation budget. Uh, so instead of having just fixed elements that don't change, what uh, you can do with Excel risk and in Monte Carlo simulations in general is you can define a range of values for the numbers you just saw a moment ago and you can run simulations where every time I click the dice, it's like you're rolling multiple dice and you're trying to see what each of those numbers come out as and then there's a grand total. Now, in addition to uh, the elements that uh, you know you need to add up, sometimes there may also be events that may or may not occur. So, you know, risk events that have a likelihood, they have an impact, and both of these are also uh, probabilistic in nature. Um, you may also have things that are kind of multipliers. So in the example I just showed, um, this is a budget estimate in one currency, but uh, when you convert it to another currency, the currency exchange itself has variability uh, where it can take uh, a high to a low number. So you get kind of an amplifier effect on all the numbers that you saw before. And uh, in addition, you also have correlation between the variables because some of the variables have to kind of move in the same direction. So even though they are random, uh, they have a common direction that uh, if all of them tend to be high, uh, they will all be high or uh, vice versa. So um, the principle is you run the simulation to the end and then you get uh, maybe 10,000 or whatever number of uh, simulations that you want and you can plot all the different outcomes and you can see the range of possible results and uh, you can also understand what are the inputs that drive those results. Now I wanted to see whether or not we could replicate the same thing into uh, a chat GPT prompt. So what I did uh, is I asked uh, ChatGPT how it was going to do it. And uh, this is the part where I said you kind of need to know what you're doing. Um, so the ChatGPT doesn't generate it um, natively because as an LLM, it does not do random number generation. Um, instead, what it does is it uses code. Uh, and by writing that code, uh, it leverages uh, ran random number generators that are built into the programming language of your choice. So in this case, it seems to have uh, picked Python to do it. 
uh, and it's pretty comprehensive. So I've done this kind of thing before professionally, asked a couple of questions about how exactly are you going to do it, how are you going to do the sampling, and uh, it gave convincing answers, including slightly more complicated topics like uh, correlation modeling. So uh, what I did is I took all the input that uh, you saw in the uh, this example, which uh, I also replicated in the Python version. Uh, you can find the uh, Jupyter Notebook in uh, a GitHub repo, and I fed it to uh, the prompt in ChatGPT uh, by telling it that uh, you have um, the ranges of this defined by this, and you've got these events, so on and so forth and asked it to generate a response. Um, so it's pretty impressive because uh, I also said, don't just generate me a response, tell me an executive summary of what it is that you're doing and also the output. So uh, it made everything into a single HTML file that you can run natively in the canvas. I uh, did this with ChatGPT5 thinking mode, uh, and you can see. Uh, it gave an executive summary explaining what were the key drivers um, what were the range of results, uh, how it did it in terms of the methodology, uh, including what kind of random number generator it used. Um, it provided the sensitivity analysis. And as you can see, this is uh, a responsive kind of thing where if you mouse over, you get the numbers, which is quite impressive. Uh, and it's uh, also giving you the uh, different variability in all the input variables. So um, somewhat impressive. Uh, and you know, going beyond this, uh, I wanted to see whether or not it could do something um, beyond just kind of a cost risk analysis uh, and um, move into something called schedule risk analysis. So. Um, this is again something that uh, I used to do uh, professionally some time back, where similar to what you saw for costs, you can do the same thing for schedules. Now, typically, this is done with specialized software. So this is called Primavera Risk Analysis. Uh, it is not the most um, cutting edge today, but uh, it still kind of works and the principle is very similar. So um, if you have a schedule, uh, that is uh, wired up, meaning that you've defined relationships between the different tasks, you've got kind of uh, definitions on non-working periods, uh, you are able to do the same thing where you can roll the dice multiple times and just see what happens to the final result. Um, so uh, the this is one level more complex than uh, a cost risk analysis. Uh, because you are trying to also do project scheduling uh, at the same time. But uh, ChatGPT supposedly has a PhD level intelligence, so I wanted to see to what extent it can replicate uh, the results, um, where if you were to run it using this specialized tool, you get uh, a range of uh, results for your final date, uh, you can also get a report in terms of what your uh, key drivers of those results were. So I did the same thing where I asked it how I was going to do it. It told me that uh, I understand what the concept is. Don't worry. Uh, in fact, actually, it cites um, a famous figure in the uh, in in this space. Uh, it talked about somebody called. Um, David Hullet. Uh, let me see if I can read that. I probably misspelled his name. Uh, and David is actually somebody who is very influential in this space. So he's been writing about this for years. Um, and the uh, it said that it would use a range of um, different Python libraries to generate um, the uh, variability and it also had a library to kind of handle the schedule um, logic. So I, what I did is I took the schedule uh, from Primavera Risk Analysis, uh, I made it into a bit of a table, I fed the table to ChatGPT and uh, told it um, to produce something similar. So 
cut to the chase. Uh, what does the result look like? Um, in this particular case, uh, it did the same thing. So, you know, it gave an executive summary. It had a distribution, but the results look kind of weird. So um, let me just kind of show you what I mean, where uh, if you look at the overall project duration, um, the project duration, uh, you get like 16 days here, but uh, something looks a bit off because uh, if you look at the final milestone ready for uh, competition, um, the 50th percentile is kind of on what, 30th of July, uh, but that is quite different from the results that you get here um, for the final finish date, uh, where it is 3rd of August. Um, I can't quite figure out what's going on. Uh, I've asked it to recheck its results. Uh, it does produce some sort of output, uh, but clearly something funny is going on because uh, if you look at um, the schedule sensitivity index, it says put up posts, fixed horizontals and pain fests is the key drivers. Um, but if you were to find, uh, look for the same thing here, uh, you don't exactly have the same results. So something must be going on somewhere. So I guess uh, if you are using um, ChatGPT to do a cost risk analysis, it seems like it works pretty good. Um, still seems to be some gaps with the schedule risk analysis. And uh, I think to make matters uh, more complex because uh, there is some value in being able to kind of see the schedule as you step through it. Um, the doing it in a prom isn't as effective. So, you know, you can ask it to make a Gantt chart, uh, but it's not quite the same thing. So it might be that for schedule risk analysis, you might still want to go back to specialist tools that do this. Uh, and Primavera risk analysis is just one of them. So um, I hope this video has been interesting and useful, especially if you work in a uh, project risk analysis space. Um, because uh, it does kind of show you uh, the power of some of these um, AI tools that are available today. Uh, but as with all these tools, um, it says uh, here that ChatGPT can make mistakes and check your important info. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.